people everybody what's up how you doing today uh we have one of liberia's top musician is in the building and uh he's a dope artist he will introduce himself then uh we will take it from there um help me share this video as i'm doing right now so that way uh people can uh hear what he has to say because he have a great important message for for liberians in general and artists in general so uh boss can you just introduce yourself and we can take it from there yeah, before I do that, uh, do you mind if I just share this uh, on my page? Oh, sure. Um, because I want to kind of focus once we get started. So, let me <laughs> okay. just, uh, hey, yeah. All right. So, so people, uh, like I told you, you have a great message for every one of us that are doing music or into entertainment in general. So, I don't want you to go nowhere. Uh, he's a... Uh, He's a good uh, brother to to me, and I uh, have great ideas when it comes to entertainment, promotions, and how to make some money from your products. Exactly. Yeah, how to make some money, and he making some money. He will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so what am I been making? So uh, let's give him a few uh, minutes. He will soon be back, and uh, he will tell us a little bit more of uh what he got to tell us uh tonight and i said i can't wait because you know sometimes we we just work hard we don't know how to make money we just concentrate concentrate on just working but we're not making money that's true and tonight he was going to break it down how to make some money as an entertainer so that way your effort cannot go in vain because Mac mackie what's up mama yeah so uh yeah. let me put this in like five liberian groups and then we can get started i think you know they got a lot of people in those groups so yeah so uh uh i would just drop something quickly for the one minute <laughs> the music is so funny. Everything keep it to yourself, keep it private. <laughs> I like that message. I like it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep it to yourself sometimes. It's because very people, are, people are crazy, you know. Everything uh some people don't want your happiness, you know. So uh that's, that's a good message. That is so, so true. Everything we do keep it to ourselves, and um uh you can put filter out when, when necessary. Yeah, so cool. um so how are we now, uh boss? Um, you know, I wanted to do a few more, but it's okay. Let's get it's started. It's okay uh, before Facebook block you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right? laughs> the more, yeah, they, they, get, they get crazy sometimes. That's true. That is so true. Um, yeah, when you threw your finger fast, I said, mm -mm, something not right. Right. They have blocked me a couple of times on just on that. So, I okay. know what it is. We're going to focus right. and get started. So, thank you, my brother, again, for having me on your platform. I truly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an honor to be able to uh, still do music, still do music for all these years. And, 
you know, to be able to share it with the world. It's truly an honor to be able to do that. So I want to tell you thank you for, you know, continue, continuously helping, yeah. uh, especially us Liberians and helping to, you know, showcase our talent. So, yeah. That's right. Okay. So uh, introduce yourself so we can get a ball really. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mizonic. I've been doing music. I'm an international artist, songwriter, and producer. The title ain't too long and promoter, but you know, so don't get that. Keep it to international artist and producer. But you know, I also love marketing and promotions. That's I mean, right. it's surprising, but um, it's surprising that I love that aspect as well. But I actually went to to business school, and I studied marketing and promotions and mm -hmm. I, didn't, I did not know <laughs> I was going to be using it like the way I, I use it. So I've been doing music uh, since uh, 2005 professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started building up my studio back in 2005 mm -hmm. um, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. For those of you who don't know, I'm right here in Charlotte. And it was a long journey, you know, a lot of hard lessons learned. You know, I got scammed in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, of course, you know, I got I mean, not small money either, my man. Like, hmm. when you're starting out, just imagine when you're starting out trying to build your studio, you're spending a lot of money on equipment, number one. And then when you have your individual project you're trying to put out and you have a a distributor at an independent distributor at a time slash scammer charging me four thousand dollars and the man only basically doing he only gave me like six beats he started my website and he ran away hmm. four, yeah and you know that that feeling victor where you know you know somebody trying to scam you you know something is not right hmm. it's like god can give you that that feeling in your heart like something is not right about the team that's right either the person is too pushy for the money or something but god will tell you in your heart in your mind like look this situation is not right don't even force it don't do it but yet and still because you're not sure the person may be convincing mm. instead of going with your heart you know you end up making a huge mistake so i'm saying that to say a lot of people you know when they have when they make a mistake like that in the beginning of any business mm -hmm. where they lose too much money it's a crossroads they either say you know what i'm not going to continue this i'm done with it or they say you know what i will pick i will learn my lesson from this and i will be better at everything i do and i think i took the latter i said i'm going to learn from this experience and I'm gonna make sure this doesn't happen to me again. Okay. Uh, before, before go, before go farther. Uh, what what type of music do you do? So I mean, I started out as a hip hop artist, mm -hmm. so basically a rapper. You know. Okay. But I've always had the African elements in my song. Like I was making those. You could call it Afro B now, but it was like african influence type of hip-hop beats i was making yeah. too so you could hear the little drums this this you could hear it in the stuff i was doing and i always did that to to showcase africa so but but now when afro beat took over like around 2016 2017 mm -hmm. i found myself trying to like share my culture with the world that's what that's when I really started rapping in Koloqua and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at the timing, it's so many years later, you know, from 2005 all the way to 2017. That's a long time. That's right. So 2017, I would say is the year that I say, you know what? For the next few years, I'm doing this Afrobeat thing. So I still rap, you know, but I did the African rap, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. We want to balance it. <laughs> yes. Want to balance it all. Okay, so um let's talk about let's talk about some business side of uh, music or entertainment. 
So uh, open our eyes because I know you know a lot and you are you are mover. You make things happen, and so uh, open our mind on how can you make some extra money on on your craft. That's that's a really good um, question or, or way to put it. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, when I started making music, mm -hmm. I, I jumped straight in the services business. What I mean by that is. Even though I had a record label, I had a I had a studio, public studio, where I opened it up to the public. Anybody who needed to record, mm -hmm. so it was at my parents' store. I had a space in the back, and I would take the laptop there and set up and record people. So even though I was doing the label part of things, like creating my own album and projects, mm -hmm. I was there making money from people recording with me that's just one way an artist can make money you have your own studio if you have the means to have your studio mm -hmm. and you into the production and, and into a recording you can open a studio public studio because people will always need to record now you have to go about it different ways because nowadays you know another thing that happened when i set up the simple login studio so God don't want that, but but it is simple. <laughs> the man that bring a speaker, a two monitor speakers, bring the Pro Tools M box, plug mm -hmm. it up to the laptop. But you know, so people who came there, although some of them were repeat customers, sooner than later they they were like, man, I'm about to go set up my own studio because they saw how simple I made it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So recording is one part of it production if you somebody who know how to make beats you know you don't have to be the person who will record everybody's song but if you make good beats and it sound really good you can make money from that too victor oh yeah yeah the other one is graphics design you may you may not be a good per a person who knows how to record or uh, a uh, uh, recording engineer who knows how to mix and master but you know how to do design graphics mm -hmm. Once you start designing graphics and it's people really start liking it, you're at the level where you can do it for anybody. You can also focus on that aspect to make money. You don't have to be everything, though. That's yeah. the one thing with music. Find the thing that you are great at, you know, while you're still working on your individual songs and putting songs out. Find the thing you're great at and say, you know what? I'm great at this. So. I'm going to use this to to fund my music. So for me, in the beginning, it was the recording studio. Mm -hmm. and trust me, I touch every aspect of music, man. Look, I know how to produce. I know how to do graphics design, but I don't like it. I know how to, to, to do filming, uh, music video shoots, and editing. I know how to do it. I don't like it, but I know how to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I taught myself how to do all these things, but I figure out the one I don't like, I'm not even going to waste my time. Like video shoot and editing is not my thing, Victor. It, it's yeah. too time consuming, but I know how to do it. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. Worst case scenario. I even bought kit, man. Look, some of the cameras I bought a long time ago, those big, big cannon, and I got them here. You know, just waste of money. But I bought them because I, I felt like I knew how to do it. So okay. it, there's so many aspects. Now, there may be somebody who's not technical at all, right? But you're a good artist. Hmm. You're not technical, but you like sneakers. You like, you know, the new Jordans in the time. You can open a sneaker store. Mm -hmm. As an artist. As an artist. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, thing, that's the thing you really like. Anything you have passion for like that will never run away from you because this is what you like. Okay. You may be an artist who's not technical. You don't know how to record people. You don't know how to produce. But you know how to write songs. You know how to write songs. So you're going to have to team up with a producer to start writing full songs for people and, and making money off your craft like that. That's right. So all these things I'm listing is what people can do when it comes to the business of music. You may be an artist who don't, who not technical, you know, 
like you know what I mean, like writing your own song. Mm -hmm. you know how to perform really well your own song like you can you can lay in a song pick and go sing it it come out good but you left flipping business <laughs> if you left flipping business you open your small king juice shop in america we call it bar back when you open your late king juice shop yeah a little bar your little bar you open your little bar because this is something you would like to do now when you open a bar, you can't go finish your product. You know, in America, they say you can't get high of your own supply. You know, no. you can't go finish your product. But at least you got an idea for that. So, you know, taste all the different kings, you know, which one people really like. So you That's open your bar and make it nice. You may be an artist who know how to cook. When you get in the kitchen set again, and you be like, che, they all are me. I can cook too much. I don't even know what to do. You know what? What you could do is open your little small restaurant or your takeout restaurant in mm -hmm. Liberia. You can do takeout. You don't have to do like sit down restaurant. You know you can even do it here too in the states. Mm -hmm. You open a little small restaurant, train some people on how to cook because you would not be there every day. You know That's what I mean? Right. And run the place. Be serious about the business. Don't joke around with it. Don't credit. Don't credit your profit away. You, in the beginning, you tell them, Lord, I'm just starting this thing. No credit business. Yo, please, yo, when you're coming, I'm begging you. Yo, in fact, you wouldn't want to even be the cashier at that business. You you might want to be in the kitchen. That's right. But you don't, don't want to be the cashier because you know your friends might come with a credit, credit, credit mean situation. So, but it had to be, you had to be on top of your game. Yeah. So these are just a few things that artists can do to make money and you can use don't take all your profit from your real livelihood business to don't take all your profit to fund music but you can take some and say you know what because of music people know me mm -hmm. i was able to establish a restaurant a lot of people know me and they come here because of me in the kitchen too making good food for them i will allocate maybe five percent of my income towards my music you know what i mean and you still make your music on the side to become music is just a vehicle to make you popular mm -hmm. you know like right now i have an it company you know and but my focus now is marketing and promotions and doing songwriting and production that's it okay. you know do marketing and promotions i help artists market their music any social media marketing you need, like any, it, my man, you need followers, you need this and that, we got it all. And I don't do all the work. I have a team of people I work with. So certain things I may do, like if you want me to create a song, I may do that personally. But if you want, if you want to mix and master the song, then I contact my engineer and okay. he will do it for you. If you want, Marketing and promotion, I contact my marketing and promotion people, tell them exactly what you need, and they will do that. So these are some of the things we all as artists can do to, to um, move forward and, and really earn some money from what we're doing, what we love. Okay. So tell me, what what earning are you, are you, are you having now? What do you do to earn a little money here and there from, from music? Because we want to know that. So again with with music right now mm -hmm. my focus my main focus right now is rebrand rebranding myself mm -hmm. to focus on the marketing and promotions songwriting and production that's the rebranding of what i'm doing before i was trying to do tours and all this stuff perform here and there it's not my focus anymore my focus is i can sit down right in my house create a song and I keep on creating good songs so people when they go and look at my catalog, if they see my catalog, they say, oh, okay, this guy could do this type of rap. He could do this type of, I'm on piano. He could do this type of, you know, Afro beat. Mm -hmm. I need a song like this. Then then that's how I, I'll make money with, with what I'm doing. Before it was well, just- well, now, And now are you making some money from music or for anything? That's yeah, right now, right, right now, right now, I'm seeing residuals, mostly residual, like royalties. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Royalty checks coming from the music I put out. You know, I'm always promoting my stuff. So I'm seeing royalties, but I am getting a lot of people who are interested in the marketing. Like even this week, I got a client to do social media marketing for her. Mm -hmm. You know, she's also an artist that I worked with a long time, a long time ago. But I'm just saying that's that's what I'm doing. I get money, residual income coming from the 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 digital Stream. yeah, streaming platforms, residual income coming from the royalty company like ASCAP, you know. So I, I'm seeing those residual, you know, yeah. residual incomes. They're coming from different areas. You know, people order my merchandise, like my shirts and stuff. I'm wearing a shirt right now. I don't know if you can see it, but it's one. Yeah, 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 I see that. It's the Mama Africa shirt. People order the shirts. So you have that on your website? Yes, I have the shirts on my website. I also teach people how to have their own, uh, uh, how you call it, merchandise company to be able to create shirts. And you don't need a lot of inventory stacked up in your house. You just need to create a shirt. You buy samples to wear them and people get interested. Or you could take pictures like how the models do, right? When you mm -hmm. buy your own shirt, you take nice pictures and post them. People say, oh, I like this one. And then you show them how to order that particular shirt. So these are all the different things I'm doing right now, kind of revamping everything. Okay. Uh, and you just said that uh, uh, you, you promote other artists uh, yeah. to promote other artists and things. Um, people normally say um, it's not possible an artist to promote another artist. So how do you do that? So, you know, that's the difference. And, and it's usually the one of the hardest things mm -hmm. in the beginning because you really have to set yourself apart mm -hmm. that you're not just an artist. Like I'm a label owner. I have more than a hundred songs that I have under my label. And some of these songs are from different artists I used to manage. If you remember at one point, I was wearing a management hat for like two years, mm -hmm. managing a whole group of three artists in DC, managing okay. another boy who was in, in, in Vegas. So these are things I was doing. So I'm not just no regular artist, you know, I'm a CEO, I'm a, a label owner, okay. you know. So, once you can set yourself apart mm -hmm. from being just a regular artist and show people the example of what you can do. Like, for instance, I had a group of DJs at one point. You remember, I even talked to you about that service mm -hmm. in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, in uh, Ghana, you know, and we're doing a radio promotion thing. Mm -hmm. But sooner than later, everybody jump on the radio promotion thing and kind of water it down to the point where and, and i don't even think it's that like it's more it's because we living in the u.s right people in africa play a music on the radio sometimes mm -hmm. you don't really see the impact you understand victor yeah you play a music they send you videos but sometimes some of them be doing croco g in other words they pretend like they're playing your music and then when you call in your friends to ask if they heard your music on the radio, some of them say no. Some of them actually play your music, which is which is true. Some of them will play it, but you don't see the impact with the uh, compared to social media. You understand? Mm -hmm. the, like people not adding you as friends or follow following you as much, and the money you dishing out for that service is too much. So for me, I just decided to revamp things and focus on social media and focus on digital music platforms at, you know, to help people that way because I, you know, I have the plug. I know how to get the streams, the organic mm -hmm. streams and the fake screen, the fake one too. I know how to get both of them. You know, everything is numbers, but I, yeah. you know, my focus is more on like that like promotions and marketing right now. Okay, so uh, do you have uh, like prices or packages for that to promote somebody? Yeah. Yes, of course. I have, you know, like dealing with clients, they'll tell you they, they need this amount of stuff, they need that. Like even the promotions I sent out recently, if you can remember, you know, I was uh, 
I don't remember verbatim, but I'm gonna see if I could pull it up just to look at some points. But um, some of these promotions, I have different types of packages, of course, you know. So like this one, I sent out. I talked about about um, sharing your music in 50 Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. I have I have an employee. She's been working with me for one year. She's out of the Philippines, and we've been doing this project together. I've had one or two artists that paid for this service, you know, over the year and uh, was able to render them this particular service. But sharing your music in Facebook group is, is important too. Like if you share your music in about 50 groups, two times, I'm only charging $50 for that service. You know, okay. most, artists, most artists never really get to share their music in those groups. And some of those groups, you know, they have thousands hundreds of thousands of people, mm -hmm. you know. So that's just one service. The other one I talked about is Spotify playlists. You know, and artists want to get on Spotify playlists. They've been hearing, but oh, you can get on playlists. I have DJs who help me create the playlist, you know, and we put the, the artist music there. So when we share the playlist, the artist gets heard, you know. So I'm only charging $25 to be on a playlist. Now, if the artist say, you know what, I want you, you and your DJs to start a whole playlist with my suit being at number one for the whole month, I have another ser that, another service. I charge $250 for something like that. Okay. You know I mean? Why do you want your song to be at the top of the playlist? Because if you share that playlist, mm -hmm. people get to hear your song first than anybody else's song. Okay. So that's why that's why you want your song, and you don't want to share your song and it just be a bunch of different sounding music. Like for instance, you don't want to be the only Afrobeat artist. Then you got rock, jazz, and all. No, you want to do. You want to get similar artists, similar major. For instance, like someone like um, Wizkid, you put Wizkid no, uh, music at number two. You put your music at number one. You know. And then you have a list of maybe 10 to 20 other artists on the playlist, you get a lot of listens like that. So okay, that's so the, the mm -hmm. money people pay is it does it have a duration? Is it for a month or just yeah. for that playlist? That playlist thing is only one month as far as your song being on number uh number one, okay. like creating a playlist or just uh, for your song to be the focus of the playlist okay. is for a month. Yeah, so it's for a month. The, the Facebook thing I share is just for, for them to share it two times. So it will be shared in 50 different groups two times, you know, so okay. like if, if they share on Monday, they can share again on Friday or on Saturday, you know. Okay. And then mixing and mastering, like I told you, I have an engineer who I've been using for, for years. He's really good. Good guy. You know, no problems. If the song don't sound like what you want, he will fix it for you, you know? Mm -hmm. But I have that service for 150 and that's reasonable for mixing and mastering, you know? Mixing the song down and mastering, not just mastering. If you just want mastering, you know, we could break it down to like $75 or $60. Mm -hmm. um, then then uh, production and songwriting, you know? Like if somebody said, my man, I heard that song you did with F.A., Independent Woman. It's song too fun. I want something. Check that out, design. So uh, that service starts, it starts at $500, but it could be more. It starts at $500. I go in my studio, create a dope song. I write the lyrics out for you. So it's called a reference track. So when I'm finished with it, I send it to you. The only thing I would do is put my name on the publishing, okay. which I wrote the song. So when you put the song out there, I can get publishing royalties of that song. You understand? Okay. But it's not the 500. To be honest with you, if I was doing it for a major artist, right? If I was doing it for a major artist, I would, not, I would start at at least maybe 20 grand. Okay, but, but let, us, let me say this. Somebody mm -hmm. would think the same way I'm thinking. If right. I pay my money for you to write a song for me, why yeah. would you have a royalty? Because I pay, you don't do any free. No, but it's different, it's different packages with paying because 
you you're gonna have to claim royalty on the back end so on the back end meaning when you put the song out you still get the you still get the um what you call it you get the royalty you get the royalty from itunes and those different platforms mm -hmm. but the publishing royalty means let's say the song is doing extremely well playing on the radio worldwide you as the songwriter you still supposed to get a residual income from that you the, as a producer and songwriter victor you're still supposed to get a, a royalty from that however however you're supposed to not have just one type of uh, one type of contract right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a case like that there would be an artist like 50 cent right 50 cent said my man look i love this song this song is dope i don't want your name on my song at all because i don't want people i, I want to be like a, i want you to be like a ghost writer that's what they call ghost writer mm -hmm. but because you're a ghost writer there mm -hmm. also is a price for that oh, okay. and it's up to you to agree or not agree if you don't agree he can't do nothing about it if you agree and say you know what i will be a ghost writer but he he will have to pay you accordingly so he mm -hmm. could tell you look i'll get you two hundred thousand three hundred thousand don't put your knee on the song that or if you put your name on the song i will give you maybe a hundred thousand dollars less okay that's how the music business works you know if you if you take a hundred thousand instead of three hundred thousand you can put your name on the song as the writer and pro producer um i still need a percentage but at least writer and producer you can get that share but if you take wow. three hundred thousand i want my company to be the publisher of the song i don't want you touching it at all you wow. you know if you want to tell people for bragging rights i wrote this song that's that's all you get bragging rights i wrote that song but that's how it's different contracts you know for and then for us helping an artist who just coming up we have to get our publishing rights that's publishing rights okay. because we're helping you and, and you know it's good you brought this point up because a lot of mm -hmm. people make the mistake victor they take five hundred dollars the song blow up, then it won't come out later to sue. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like, it's too late. Do the thing in the beginning. My man, 500 is nothing. When this song blow up, all of our lives gotta change. So I at least in writing. Yeah, you gotta put it in, at least let me get my publishing rights, which means I'm not taking money from you, but at least let me get my publishing rights of the song. So, so, the, so the publishing right, that that's mm -hmm. the fund that comes through that publishing right that you're supposed to receive as a, as a writer yes you get a writer you get a writer on residual mm -hmm. and you get the you get the producer residual oh, so yeah. if if you did both but if you just wrote the song then you got a producer the producer is supposed to get something too you know now you as the art the writer and producer you have to register with a it's called a performing performance rights company mm -hmm. so in america there are three main ones ascap uh, you probably heard of ascap before yeah bmi and then another one called csac mm -hmm. those are the three main performance rights or uh, organizations in the united states that collect those kind of royalties for you oh, yeah. so your music can, yeah your music can play anywhere in the world on the radio those people will go and collect that radio money for you wow you will not see it tomorrow but you'll see it like every quarter like every three months you will see it mm -hmm. so you know sometimes the checks be nice when i see it so then i pay my whole mortgage for that month sometimes it just be like 500 sometimes you know some it just depends mm -hmm. on how the thing did that quarter sometimes it can be really nice sometimes it can mm -hmm. be small but that's how it is that's why i keep on making songs and promoting them because if you let a song sit down you don't promote the song then nothing happens but if That's you promote the songs like i used to work with this radio promotional company and they put the song in europe all in mm -hmm. europe then you know when myspace was popular people used to hit me i'd be like look i heard your song on the radio in this place i heard it you know wow. so that's how you do it you know it's so many ways to promote music Okay, so uh, how can people find you on social media if somebody wanted to contact you? Yeah, if somebody wanted to just contact me, um, my name is Mizanic Tunes on 
it's Facebook where I have like it's not my official band page where I have just regular friends, but my official band page is just Mizonic. So it's M E Z O N I C the way I spell it. Mm -hmm. Um that's for Facebook, but on Instagram is Mizonic Tunez. On uh TikTok is Mizonic Music or Mizonic Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then I have a central website. My website is available where you can go there and see all the different services I have. It's uh Mizonicrecords.com or M R P E L L C dot com. So okay. and what advice can you give to upcoming artists that are trying to to be up there but is they getting it difficult to get there so with an upcoming artist if you don't know about the business mm -hmm. find a friend who is into business if the friend is not a if the friend is not uh someone who knows about the music business mm -hmm try to see if this friend can learn the music business to help you but the friend knows about business you got to have somebody who is business minded because if not you will get frustrated and everything will die down in a few years if if you have a business minded person that can really help you because there are artists who want to just focus on their craft Mm -hmm. They don't really think too much about business like that, you know, but I would say if you're an artist who doesn't care about business, my man, you got to you got to learn something small. Yeah. Yeah. You got to learn something small. You got to learn something small when it comes to business. That's right. Because that's the only way you will really survive this music thing. Music is not something that will give you money every single day unless Unless you use your head and say, you know what, I will open an every single day business like the restaurant we're talking about, mm -hmm. or, or like a small convenience shop where you know people will come buy their little groceries, their bread, their milk, their tea, their different things. Unless you open a business like that where you would get money every day, music music is not an everyday money maker, man. Okay. So really, yeah. There's something that I want to clarify before we start going uh we first start wrapping up okay uh you 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 own a label before in america when you mm -hmm. get a music and when you get when you get on the label the american people give you some cash up front right so picture with some things buy a house buy a car why it be flushy whatever in africa you put it on label you you get drawn with a label company they no money to give you up front all the new or on the label, you pass it around, or you're broke. So, can you divine that part? Yeah, so Victor, the thing is, you have independent labels. Mm -hmm. the independent label is not going to work like a major label. Mm -hmm. You understand? I don't care what, what is a label. A label is just an entertainment company that's going to put out music mm -hmm. basically for a profit, but the idea is. They're gonna put out music and that's it. Not forget about studio, forget about the studio, because mm -hmm. they can go anywhere and put out music. Mm -hmm. That's what a label is, right? Independent label is is a company, a small company that's gonna put out music. So what that means is if you have artists, you're gonna have to work out deals with your artists, right? If you have artists, you're going to have to work out deals with the artists and say, look, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I don't have money to fund. I don't have money to like get you up front. Yeah. But I can help you. I can help you get the music out there. When you when you make the song, I can do my promotion to get you the numbers. Like look at Jay Zeno for for instance. Jay Zeno is an independent artist. Mm -hmm. Jay Zeno is not on a major label. Jay Zeno management ha managers had to study the game in uh, in order to put his music to where it is now. Mm -hmm. You understand? What I'm saying? They had to. He has he has a lot of hidden investors who dump money into the projects. He himself had to go learn how to get his music to where it is right now. 
he had to learn it. This this stuff is not stuff that nobody he had he took upon himself to say, look, I'm gonna learn what I need to do to get my music to where it needs to go. So that's why Zeno is seeing the results even bigger than major labels. His results are bigger than most major labels in America are not even doing the numbers they begin being doing. Wow. But yet and still, yet and still, the way how the they, you know how the the major labels thrive and survive in America, Victor. You know how? Do you know? Mm -hmm. No. They survive like this. They might have a hundred artists, right? Mm -hmm. And they will do a test. They will start releasing music and testing it. One of those artists would be the breakout artist. Mm -hmm. Basically, the song would just do so well. That one song that's doing well like that is gonna feed the label for a long time because mm -hmm. they were that's how to do it. Because not every artist on a major label song doing anything. They just put the songs out. If the song don't do anything on the billboard charts, they they tell you, my man, go sit on small that try the other man. It's just like oh, really? I, 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 I thought I thought it it make you produce new one. The cool they, one. I mean they make you produce new one. You go, they will tell you, they will, they will tell you, okay, here, you have a recording budget. That's how they get you the recording budget, right? This is your advanced recording budget. Mm -hmm. Go and make songs. So you as the artist got to go find producers and make nice songs. That's what you're supposed to do. That's right. But there will be somebody on that label where that song would just skyrocket. You understand that song would just yeah. do well better than everybody's song. That's right. So the label gets to survive off of that one artist, Victor. They get to send all the artists to tour with that artist that's making a name. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the same genre, though. In the same genre, most of the time they don't just they don't like to mix. Like they will not put the rock people on hip hop stage. They will not do that. But if if me and you on the same label and your song right now. You're a gospel artist, I'm Afro being, but your song doing better. Mm -hmm. The major label will say, you know what? Even though he's gospel, sometimes they will get other gospel artists to tour with you. You understand? Mm -hmm. And there was they will fund the tour so you can make money, but that money you're making is gonna also come back to the label to help with other projects. That's you right. heard of something called 360 deal. Mm -hmm. They started doing it a lot in America because before the major labels were not messing with people touring money, they were only focused on records. But they noticed that the records were not really selling, like making money like that. Mm -hmm. So they had to present artists with what we call now 360 deal, meaning they're getting money from your merchandise, your clothes, they're getting money from your tour, they're getting money from your music, they're getting yep. money from everything you put. Anything you put out there, they, if you get sneaker, they will get money from that sneaker. If you get chiclet, they will get money from that chiclet. If you, okay. you know, I'm just saying. So that's that's what it when they started doing 360 deals. Okay. So that's how, that's how major labels survive. Independent wow. label is a little independent label is a little different. Uh, if you want me to go a little deeper, so I can talk about Cash Money Records, right? Mm -hmm. You remember Cash Money Records? Yeah. Cash money workers, they're still around today, but they're I think they call a little they changed their name or something. But it started with Birdman, Birdman and his brother Slim mm -hmm. from New Orleans. They started with how many artists? They started with about five artists, Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. Turk, uh Juvenile, uh what the other guy named BG and another guy, I think not forget him, but they started with those five artists. And in the beginning, you know who who music was making who music was the breadwinner in the beginning? Mm -mm. Juvenile. If you remember the song "Back That Thing Up," yeah, girl, you look good when you back that thing. Mm -hmm. That song, that song catapulted them to be able to go renegotiate the distribution deal. Oh yeah, yes, that song made them so much money. To where Berman said, "Look, on our own, we spend a, a lot of money on radio uh, marketing and promotions, and we're able to make 
three, three to five. I don't know. I think they made up to ten million dollars or something from that oh, song. Wow. So they went to the distribution company and said, "We can do this on our own. Give us a a label distribution deal. So when we put the record out, y'all would just put it in all the stores ev everywhere around the country. That time, you know, CDs was popular. CDs. Yeah. So so the distribution company said to them, you know what? They get they get a man a hundred million dollar cash. Mm -hmm. The distribution company that deal was unheard of because artists never made money like that before. They wow. gave him a hundred million dollars cash to to market and promote any record they put out. So basically, it was a win win situation for them. That's not an artist deal. That's a label deal. The deal That's was right. to be. Able to the deal was to be able to produce albums for the artists and be able to market the artists. You know, that money there was really to be like, like you give me hundred million dollars, I got five artists, I can say, you know what? Lil Wayne, I'll give you a million dollars to go produce a dope album, right? Mm -hmm. And when you produce the dope album, the distribution company gets, they were only getting 20%. The distribution company that gave them a hundred million dollars were only mm -hmm. getting twenty percent of the residual from each album sold. Can you imagine that? And the wow. man was thinking, that's how he got so that's how they got so rich. They were getting eighty percent. Any record to put any album. When I say record, I mean album now. And an album is not a single. It's yeah. several things on a CD or several songs. Your album is your album. That's right. So. Imagine Victor, the label was getting 80% giving the distribution company that gave them a hundred million dollars, 20%. But wow. it, they, they still made a lot of money. The distribution still made a lot of money too. Because Lil Wayne albums, that's when they started going to number one. So Birdman, the only problem with most of us black people, we are too flashy. When you never have stuff before, you want to be too materialistic and I go know. buy several houses and cars and, and you end up mismanaging. So when you start looking back, you're like, oh, man, I mismanaged this money. That's what Birdman did. He mismanaged a lot of money, but he still has money. He still has money. And let me tell you something. Today, today, because of that record label, Little Wayne signed Drake. Drake is like, Drake is like, one of the biggest artists of the last 15 years, man. Yeah, Drake, the guy from Canada, right? Yes, Drake. Drake is one of the biggest artists. Of course, Drake got his own label situation too now, but Little mm -hmm. Wayne signed Drake. So the contract Drake was under was under Little Wayne, and Little Wayne was under Birdman and Slim. Little Wayne signed Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right now, she's not signed to him. Maybe the, the company she's way how to buy her buy her from Little Wing. And so Little Wing got a cut, Birdman got a cut, and that's how the thing works. That's how it works. So having a legal is not bad, but it's just like, you know, it's levels to it, you know. Okay. So uh, let's go to uh, to the closing area. Now what what do you want us to know before we, we get this interview close? thing that I have not asked you or something important that we, we ought to know? I mean, right now, of, of course, as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, I'm promoting my, my latest mixtape, I'm going to drop another one maybe within the next month because it's probably already six months since this mixtape has been out. It's called Watch the Videos, mm -hmm. and it's a compilation of some of the older songs I've done and some of the new songs I've done. So I just put it all together on a mixtape so people can kind of know my range of what I've been doing over the years compared to and, what I'm doing. And when is it coming out? No, it's already out. Watch the okay. video, the mixtape that you share the cover. Okay, okay. So, so how can me. people follow you on social media? <clears throat> the best way to follow me is, I mean, I'm everywhere. Instagram, okay. Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. But the best way, you know, for people in our country, Liberia, to, to listen to the stuff, is going on YouTube, you know. A lot of people like audio mag. I have some records on there, but my focus is YouTube because at least I get to see my money coming. Exactly. 
Because if I just stand and get on all your Mac, I'm not really making money from all your Mac like that right now. So it would just be like free promotion. So I'd rather them go to my YouTube, subscribe, watch some of the videos I put out, enjoy the old stuff that I have and stuff like that. Um for 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 the CEO and label or other services, they can go to my website and see some of the promotional services I have. And what is your website? My website is mizonicrecords.com or mrpellc.com. They can go there and see the, the, the services I offer and contact me straight from there too. You know. That's cool. Uh, yeah. man, you we have a great, great, great information today. I see a lot of people making comments. Uh yeah, yeah you really did a good job. So um in, in closing, uh what are, what are some things that we ought to know? Like you got anything new? that we got to know about? Yeah, well, I mean, I got a few new singles I dropped recently. You know, y'all could go listen to them. Okay. And check out my backlog. The first thing I would say, for those of you who don't know anything about me and music, go to YouTube and listen. You can go to Apple Music, Spotify, but YouTube is free. Go there. See and, it live. See it live. Check out, watch the videos. Watch the videos by Mizani. Oh, uh, our boy GGG did a commercial for me and all. Mm. Watch the videos by Mizani. Go there and enjoy the stuff. But if you want to dive deeper into what I've done, I have newer singles. I just did a single hip hop single called Hunger. You know, and it's a it's a dope single. Uh, it's it was a. <laughs> I did a song called uh, uh what unpredictable right unpredictable yeah. yeah. And, a long time I hadn't done a full hip hop song. So when I did that song, it just kind of reminded me that hip hop was my first love. So, you know, hip hop was my, was my first love. So I should I shouldn't forget about hip hop. That's why I went back and did a, another hip hop joint called Hunger. So okay. um, if you haven't heard Hunger, go listen to it. You'll love it. Um, but I just want to remind artists out there. Don't be shy to reach out to me to, to produce your record. Don't be shy to reach out to me to write your records. We can negotiate the situation. If you don't, you know, if you don't want my name to be on your, your flyer or something, we can negotiate, but just respect me on my publishing rights too, because you don't have money to pay me like that unless you're a major artist. So you, right. don't, you can't come to me and tell me I can't claim publishing. I don't like that, you know? So, but other than that, I'm here to, to service and help the people. Any service, if you put out a record, you don't know what to do. You could reach out to us, we'll help you with it. If you wanna be on the biggest radio station in this world, we can get it done for you, basically. But it requires money. It's not, it's not something that's gonna come out of our pocket. You know, we, we just know how to get there, but you know, you gotta spend the bread. All right, uh, Ms. Honey, I want to say thank you so much for coming through, and let's do this again. Yeah. Uh, time go by, you know, educate people what to do so they can make some money, business out of the, the entertainment. Right, so right. Uh, I want to say thank you for coming, and I hope to see you again. Oh, definitely. You know, you know, we always been on here supporting yeah. our channel, supporting a Royal Family TV. So thank you so much for the interview. I really enjoyed it. I could have gone deeper, but you know, it's good. Like it's good for people to know how these things work. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta give my I gotta pat myself on the back because in two thousand, I think it was two thousand eight, I was the only Liberian artist to actually have a physical CD. I don't know why that CD is. Let me see if I can find like, it. So like, I can... Like, like a hard copy? No, I'm, I'm about to tell you what. So this CD, this CD called Inspire, right? I did Inspire too, but this CD here mm -hmm. was in North, in Best Buy stores in oh, North. Yeah. This CD, Inspire, mm -hmm. was in Best Buy store. If anybody knows about Best Buy, it's one of the biggest electronics and music store in the country. Mm -hmm. This CD was in Best Buy stores in North and South Carolina. A lot of people yeah. see 
different different stores all through North and South Carolina. People call me from everywhere, like my man, your CD there is there. I bought it, it's, it's there. So wow, that was one of the accomplishments we made before the streaming thing became popular. But I have physical CDs and I still have CDs for newer albums too. Not not watch the video make state, but I have physical CDs that um you know people tend to they tend to forget it's a product. Victor, you will not believe people still order this stuff from me. Wow. The shirt I'm wearing is the same CD if y'all could see it. Oh, okay. This is Mama Africa. This is the one that has uh Shake That Tumba three and all that. Shake that tumba. What the other song I did? Um She Ready. Hmm. So if, if you go to, to watch the videos, you'll see she read it video, you see shake that to my voice on the CD. And people order, you know why people order the CD? They don't know me from anywhere. No. They order the CD. I get most of my sales from DC and Houston area. But they just go on eBay and order the CD. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because of the way I market it. That's people right. are looking for good music. When they see it, they go on YouTube, they check it out, they order it. That's so I'm right. just encouraging your artists too. Don't sleep on CDs. When you go do your performance, have your T-shirts, yeah. have your CDs to make money. All right. Ms. Honey, I want to say thank you so much. And uh, our time is literally just there now. So uh, oh. yeah, I will, I will see you soon. Again, thank you so much for, for being on Royal Family TV. Thank you so much for having me, my brother. I really appreciate it. All right, people, there you have it. I give it up for our boy. Flat out. Peace <laughs> out.